close your eyes and pull like that. <laughs> And a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam Maguire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast this week. My name is Kier McCarthy, sports editor of the Southern Star. Before we kick things off, I'd like to give a gentle reminder to our listeners and viewers to please, 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 please rate, review and subscribe to the podcast on, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. You may have noticed already that I am flying solo this week. I'm without our Star Sport podcast mastermind, the podcast guru from the Southern Star, Jack McCarran. So bear with me this week as I as I work my way through hosting the podcast on my own for the first time. But um, it's a good job that we have a great podcast lined up and we have a great Southern Star sports section lined up too this week. And this week's podcast, and this week's show, we're focusing on the rise of West Cork rugby and we're speaking to John Hodnett of Ross Garbury and Munster fame. That ties in with this week's sports section where we have a 16-page special on the rise of West Cork rugby. And that special magazine is thanks to and in sponsorship with and in partnership with Sintra, who came on board with this magazine. So we're delighted to have Sintra on board as our sponsors of the Rugby Rising, which looks at the growth of rugby in West Cork. Regular listeners of this podcast, um, it's, it's, it's no surprise to learn or to hear that rugby is booming right across the region right now. Um, local men and women are putting West Cork on the map at both Munster and national level. And we even have Laura Sheehan, who's with Exeter over in England, as is Andrea Stock from, from Doris, who is playing with Wasps ladies over in London. So the, the West Cork rugby gospel is gone international, which is great to hear. And always in the Southern Star, we follow the exploits of our, our local men and women who are doing great things on the, on the sporting field. Just a quick, I suppose, a, a quick look at the, the West Cork rugby story over the last couple of years before we talk to John Hodnett. Um, if you go back to Darren Sweetenham, that was 2012. He's the former Donnies and Cork, Cork Hurler who signed a professional contract with Munster Rugby that year. And I suppose that... That showed a, a pathway exists from West Cork right up to Toman Park to Munster and even beyond. And over the last number of years, we've seen a huge number of local men and women go on to, to play at a very, very high level. I mentioned there Laura Sheehan from Oren, who is an Ireland senior international, as is Inya Breen, who's living in Castle Townsend. Um, Andrea Stock, like we said earlier, she's a, a player who came through the ranks with Bentry Bay Rugby Club and now she's playing with Wasps over in London. Turning to the men's game, there's Darren Sweetnam, like we said, from Dunmanway. There are the Witcherly brothers, Finine and Josh from just outside Bentry. There are the Coombs' cousin from Skibbereen, Gavin Coombs, who was the, the huge breakout star for Munster Rugby this year, and he got his ninth try of the season just last weekend. There's also his first cousin, Liam, as well. Moving further out then, um, we have Ross Garbury's John Hodnett. Like I said, we'll talk to him very soon. In the Shannons, Jack Crowley is someone who there's huge talk about and huge excitement about him. And he came on again for months to last weekend. And Jack came through Bandon Rugby Club and Bandon Grammar. And he's someone that Ronald O'Gara over in La Rochelle in France tried to, to, to sign for his top 14 club. But um, Jack has decided to stay with with Munster and fight for his place there. The next the, the next level under you'd like to Keen Hurley of Clan of Kilty, who's, who's on the way up as well. So as you can see from that, there's a, a lot of local men and women who are doing great things with West Cork rugby or for West Cork rugby. And that's not even to mention the clubs. The clubs from, from Bantry to Dunmanway to Clan of Kilty to Skibbereen to Bandon, they've had huge success over the last number of years, winning all Ireland's at different levels, You've had Bandon winning the Munster Junior Cup a couple of years back. They won Division 1 of the Munster Junior League. So between club level and representation and Munster and so on, rugby is booming in West Cork. And that's why we've decided to run this week's 16-page special magazine. And it's also why we had a quick catch-up with John Hodnett of Ross Garbury. He played football with Garbury Rangers up until he was minor, but he was also playing rugby with Clannacilty, rugby club and it was around then that he decided to 
focus his attention on rugby and he is reaping the rewards. And the good news is that in the last couple of weeks, John has signed his first senior deal with Munster Rugby. So from next season on, he's been promoted to the senior squad. So that's brilliant news for, for John Hodnett. And again, another indication that local West Cork rugby players, their talents are being recognised and we see that by the huge numbers in with Munster Rugby at the moment. So when I got up with, with John, he's still rehabbing from the Achilles injury that ended his season. But as you'll hear from him now, he's in good form and he's looking forward to getting back on the pitch. We're joined now on the podcast this week by the Ross Garbury man who's making uh, making waves with Munster Rugby, John Hodnett. Welcome to the podcast, John. Hi, uh, Erdings. How are you, Dan? Um, great to have you on because we're looking in depth at West Cork Rugby this week and you're one of the main, like I said, making headlines at Munster Rugby. First off, I just want to start with the congratulations. You signed your first senior deal at Munster quite recently. Um, it was announced a two-year deal. So what was that like to kind of hear that news first? And how did you hear that news? Uh, oh, yeah, no, it was great. Um, I was really happy to sign on for another two years. So um, especially with my jeans at the moment, it just kind of gives me a bit more uh, breathing room to kind of get over that and stuff. And uh just focus on getting back as best as I can. So, yeah, I was delighted to, to sign on for another two years. How much of a confidence booster is it when you get a contract like that? Kind of like the kind of faith that Munster Rugby are showing in you? Yeah, no, it's great. Like, obviously, it's, uh, it's really nice to, to, to get it and stuff. And I'm really happy with it. Like, and um, you know, obviously, I suppose, you know, there's a few other lads doing really well at the moment as well. So, I'm happy they kind of got a, got a few nice contracts as well. So, yeah. You mentioned there too, John, about your injury. You're kind of you're out at the moment because you suffered a season injury in season ending Achilles injury. That's a, a tongue twister if ever yeah. there was one. So just to check now, how is the rehab going? Yeah, no, it's it's going it's going really well to be fair. Um, you know, I suppose it is it is kind of a slower injury to get over, like and um uh you know, things are going very well at the moment anyway. So I'm I'm very happy at how it's going. Um probably another few months before I'm back anyway, but uh you know, I'm happy kind of with everything at the moment and how it's going. So, can't, yeah, happy enough. When you suffered injury first, did you realise you'd be out for so long? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of knew. Um, I knew straight away. Um, I kind of knew after uh, you know straight away it happened. I kind of knew it was, it was it was bad. Like so. Um, yeah, I kind of knew it straight away. Like it was it was it was bad. Like. And how yeah. frustrating was that for you, then? Because you started the season so well, I think, against Southern Kings. Oh, sorry, against Edinburgh, Cardiff Dragons. You were in good performances. And you were you were really kind of showing your worth again with Munster. And then to be hit with that injury, was it disappointing, frustrating? How did you react and cope with it? Yeah, definitely disappointed. Like, you know, I was just, you know, I was really enjoying playing. Um, and, you know, I suppose it just ended so quickly then. Like, you know, and I suppose um, it was very, very disappointing. Like, um but I guess there's no point dwelling on it really. Like, you know, it happens to everyone. Like, everyone gets a long term injury at some point in their career. So, just trying to make the best of it now at the moment, like, and try to improve other parts of my game. Um, it's probably my focus anyway. What has the rehab been like? And have you been watching on now as the as, as, as Munster kind of true to the true to the Pro 14 final? They're kind of doing great things at the moment. It, are you are you a good fan to watch on, or are you are you a kind of a, a fan who are or you find it hard to watch or what's that like watching on from the sidelines? Yeah, I know, like obviously it's just great that once they're into a final and uh, you know they're playing so well. Like I suppose it is it does get hard sometimes to watch, especially you know when you're injured, like um, but like I'm obviously delighted that Munster are into a final, not final now, and you know, I think they've a really good chance of uh, of getting some silverware this year now, which is which is great for the club, like. Let's talk about some good news or some good performances. Let's go back to your your Munster Pro 14 debut against Southern Kings. That was February 2020. What it's over 12 months ago now. Man of the match performance. Like you really announced your your arrival on, on, on the main stage. You must have great memories from that game. Yeah, I know. Geez, yeah, I was um I couldn't have really asked for much more. Um, you know, I was really happy with it. And uh, you know, I suppose your debut, you just kind of want to make sure that you're not gonna, you know, as you say, kind of just hang in there like, but kind of show yourself what you can do like so you know I was happy I kind of got opportunities to do that so yeah I was really really happy and how much confidence do, do you take from, from a performance like that like I said it was your debut end of the match scored as well and um, you must have been on, on cloud nine after yeah oh yeah no doubt like I was, I was really really happy with it um you know and and uh you know I was really happy to perform and stuff and I, I had been kind of working hard and stuff and towards that goal of, of, of playing for Munster so you know, to achieve it then was great. Like, and obviously, just to show what I could do too is is uh, is another thing I was really happy with as well. So, 
and you've obviously a huge fan base back home in West Cork and especially around West Garbury. Um, let's talk about your football days for a second before you hit yeah. the headlines with, with Munster Rugby. You were playing with Carby Rangers. I think you played up to minor there. So um, how much did you enjoy enjoy your football? Oh, yeah. Jeez, I love it. Like, um, I still do love it. Like, I kind of keep up, show my best, keep up with everything at the moment. Like, you know, a lot of all my friends play and stuff. And, you know, I'd love to still be playing, but obviously I just can't, you know. Um, it's obviously something I probably want to play again at some point in my life. So, um, geez, no, I, I do miss it, like, definitely. Um, you know, I played a lot. I played with Cork and stuff when I was young, younger as well. Like, so I suppose I had really good memories playing football and stuff, you know, because obviously, you know, playing for Cork is a really nice thing as well, you know. So, um, yeah, do miss it. You, you have a cousin too, Mark Hodden. I think he's obviously Ross Senior. So, would there ever be any little text messages and phone calls? Come on, John, come across for this game. There's a big, we have a big championship game coming up. Ross, Ross needs you. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I've had a few of them already. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, look, I, I'd obviously love to play, like, but I, I, uh, I just, you know, at the moment, I just can't, like, and uh, something I do, do really miss, to be fair, like, you know, I do miss playing football, like, so. And yeah. when you were playing for Carberry Rangers too, John, you were obviously playing for Clannock Kilty Rugby Club as well. You were playing the two sports, rugby and football, in parallel with one another. Um, talk to me, Swabit, so about Clannock Kilty. How important were they in your development? Yeah, yeah, extremely sure. Um, you know, I suppose it's where I kind of learned how to play rugby really as such. So, got all really good foundations, you know, on, on the game and stuff and, and the basics. Like, so I feel definitely playing with Clan, like, it really, you know, promoted the things I'm good at, like, you know, carrying and tackling and stuff. So, uh, yeah, no, I was really happy playing clan. And how did I mention Ross Carberry falling up at rugby? Because when I think of Ross Carberry, I think of Carberry Rangers. I think it's it's pure football territory, pure yeah. football country. So how did the interest in rugby first come about? Uh, I, I don't know, not really. Like, um, I remember I was in school one day and one of my friends, uh, uh, Brendan Layden, he lives over the road from me, but uh, he was going in playing rugby and uh, I was just, you know, he just said, look, come give it a try. And I said, I would, yeah. And then, I came in and I enjoyed it like and I suppose I haven't looked back since and I, I kept away playing like you know it's kind of it really like you know I suppose no, no one in my family ever played rugby or anything like and so there's not too many around you know Ross Gabby would play rugby either like but um you know I'm delighted now I went in and, and gave it a shot anyway you know. And that kind of Kilty team that you were on like it was quite successful kind of coming up along I was chatting to Mara Shenley just a couple of weeks ago because he he, he played rugby too and obviously he's a Cork senior mm. footballer now and I think Keen Hurley might have been on the same team was he kind of coming up. Yeah yeah yeah. So th- that was quite a talented clan team, was it? Yeah, geez, yeah, we had uh, we had a lot of really good players. Um, that age group, like you mentioned, uh, Morris and Keane, and there's a lot of other lads too as well. Like, um, and we you know we we did very well. Like, you know, and I think we got very close to winning a few like monster um, cups and stuff. So, like in fairness, there was a really really good group of my age, um, and I think we did very well anyway. Um, you know, through any competitions we played, like. And how did you find in, John, that the skills from Gaelic football transfer over to rugby? Because I remember talking to Mick Galway before and um, he played football first before he went to rugby and he found it really did help him, kind of his ball handling skills and so on. Did you find that there's a there's a common ground between the two sports? Yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose coordination probably is a big thing, like, you know, playing as many sports as you can probably will, will it help that. Like, um, you know, I suppose catching and passing and kind of looking for space, I suppose is kind of similar in both games. Like, um and just getting your, your head up and looking and scanning, I suppose, you know, all those little things, I guess, help um, playing both sports because you're always doing that in football and rugby, like. And I mentioned earlier too, you're one of the one of the, the mini West Cork men um, who are making waves at Munster at the moment. Um, there's Darren Sweetnam, Gavin Coombs, Liam Coombs, mm. Jack Crowley, Finney Mitchley, Josh Witchley, yourself, Keen Hurley's there, James French signed a, signed a deal lately as well. So, um, and then on the women's side, obviously, Inya Breen and Laura Sheen are doing great things on the Munster, Exeter and the Ireland set up as well. So there's a real boom in West Cork rugby at the moment. What do you put that down to? Why do you think all of a sudden that West Cork has become this kind of conveyor belt for, for talented rugby players? Um, yeah, I, I'm actually not too sure. Um, I suppose the last couple of years, like developments around uh, rugby in West Cork has gone way up. And obviously, that has a massive impact. I feel like, you know, um, there's a lot more promotion on rugby and stuff and it's not just maybe a GA kind of part of Cork anymore like I suppose there's a lot of other different sports that you can play there as well and I guess you know more people maybe are trying it because you know there's more development and promotion in rugby like maybe um, you know more fellas are trying it and I suppose that's obviously going to lead to more people playing 
you know, uh, more catchment and like more people playing rugby. And I guess that's only a positive, really, like, you know, the more to play. Did Darren Sweetham have a very important role in all this too? Because he signed his Munster contract back, was it 2012, 2013? And he was almost the kind of the first in this wave that's going on at the moment. So for, for you growing up, like you could see someone from Dunmanway just over the road, kind of big, strong GA background with Donnie's car curlers too. But he opted to go down the professional sports route with rugby. And it showed that there was, and that there is a path from West Cork right up to Munster and beyond. So was someone like seeing what Darren achieved, was that important too? And do you think it's important too for, for, for young boys and girls right across West Cork that they can see these local people going on to achieve these great things? Oh yeah, definitely. Like I suppose when I, I suppose I was, I was kind of young enough when in 12 or 13 when, when Darren did, uh, signed that. So obviously when you're that age and you're seeing someone like that signed for Munster, it's, you know, I suppose it shows it's possible that you can do it and stuff, you know, um, and definitely seeing that he was from West Cork and playing for Munster was massive for me anyway. Um, and I'd say a lot of the other fellas, if you ask any other fellas, I'd say they'd say the same, you know, seeing something like that. Because you've got a confidence that maybe you could do it as well. Like. And I know Tom Savage of the Three Red Kings, he's kind of phrased West Cork Mafia. So what's it like up at Munster rugby training when you look around and you see lads from all over West Cork and you hear these West Cork accents? It must be um, must be nice to have that familiar sound of home around the place. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Like um, I sit next to Josh in the, in the dressing room anyway. So I'll be chatting with him every day like and you know I suppose meeting lads at the training and stuff it's great to kind of to have that and I suppose you talk about a few things from home and stuff as well so it's kind of nice to have that connection too with a lot of the lads um choose a lot of lads up there as well now you know so it's great I think half of West Cork is almost deployed up to Munster at this stage there's so many fellas yeah. on, on different contracts up there so look into the future so obviously you're you're in rehab at the moment you you hope to get back you're probably looking at start the next season so what is your goal and target going forward at Munster? Uh, I suppose at the moment anyway it's just to get back um, comfortable playing like and maybe back to where I was before I get injured is probably the only thing I'm really focusing on at the moment like you know hopefully if that happens everything else will take care of itself so I suppose at the moment for me really it's just getting over this injury and um, you know just being as good as I can when I come back And how encouraging is it too John to see that, that Munster are giving young fellas their chance like I said like you've made your debut Josh Witcherly Get uh, Gavin Coombs is obviously flying. Finneen is there. Um, Jack Crowley came on for his Pro 14 debut back in January. So Munster are putting their face in in the kind of the kind of the next generation of players. So that must be kind of encouraging too to know that you will get your chance. Yeah, oh, definitely. Like, and I suppose you know, as long as you're playing well in training and stuff, you know that they are going to pick you. Like, no matter what your age is or you know or what your experience is. So as long as you're kind of doing your best day in day out and, and showing what you can do like you know you're probably going to be hopefully a good shot of being picked anyway like um, so yeah it's, it's a really good environment at the moment like you know and there's no I suppose um, I suppose there's no worry about like being too young or anything like you know if you're good enough they'll put you in like so it is good I think it's onwards and upwards for for, for John Hodnett and the rest of the West Cork crew in with um in at Munster at the moment, probably bad news for Declan Hayes, who's the new Kirby Rangers senior football manager. He'll have to he'll have to take yeah. your, your number off speed dial for a couple of years anyway. But John, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Yeah. And best of luck in your recovery, and we'll chat to you again soon. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast, number one for sport in West Cork. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast. Great stuff there by John Hodnett. As you know by now, there's a 16-page rugby special in this Thursday Southern Star. And that rugby special, like I said earlier, is thanks to Sintra. Uh, there's something for everyone in this rugby special. I catch up with Laura Guest from Clamacilty, who is a veteran of three rugby World Cups. And she was part of the Irish women's team that won the Grand Slam in 2013. And Laura is also a former West Cork Sports Star of the Year. So I chart her story. Also catch up with Laura Sheehan, who is from Orhan. Just a story I always found interesting how a, a woman from, from Beira, from such a traditional GA stronghold, is now playing rugby at the top, top level. So a good interview with Laura Sheehan there. We're delighted too to have Tom Savage. He's the editor of the, the popular and so and so well-known Three Red Kings website. Um, he's, come, he's come on board for this special and he's four pieces, four really, really good pieces in this rugby special. He looks at the rise of Gavin Coombs. He talks about Jack Crowley and why he's so special. Tom also looks at Darren Sweetenham, 
Darren Sweetnam's story and how he showed that that path exists from West Cork to Munster. And there's also a, a super piece about the Witcherly Brothers that Tom Savage has written. So delighted to have Tom on board for this week's special. So that's well worth checking out. Also, I caught up with Finbar Carney of Skibbereen Rugby Club. And this is a great story that not, not a lot of people might know about, to be quite honest. But back in the 1980s, Finbar Carney was a Skibbereen Rugby player who played for Munster from 84, 85 up to 91. And two times Finbar got to the, the final Ireland trials um, and he was within touching distance of getting on the squad and winning uh, a senior international cap for Ireland, which is an incredible story in itself. So I've caught up with, with Finbar to talk about his rugby career from Skibbereen this Sunday as well, to Munster, to those Ireland trials and how close he got. And I also talked to John Field of Skibbereen Rugby and Donal Linehan of Munster and Ireland rugby fame to get their recollections about Finbar Kearney, their rugby player, and again, there's lots more besides that. We have a look at Bandon Grammar School. We have a look at the at the clubs in West Cork. Who, um, the clubs share their philosophies and how they coach the game. Five local rugby players tell us about the match that meant the most to them. So there's loads going on in this week's Southern Star Rugby Special. And as well as that, there is more. I also caught up with Regis Sonne, the, the Frenchman who spent two years with Bandon Rugby and he transformed rugby there. And I'm also charting how his influence is still being felt in Bandon Rugby. So there's that 16 page special in Torres' Southern Star. So that's well worth picking up. But there's also a lot more than that. We've been interviewed Ronan Hurley, the Skull Soccer Star, who's looking forward to the, the big kickoff this season with Cork City. Um, Martin Walsh is looking at the first local winners of the West Cork Rally. So great, great piece there. Interview two with Martin Coppinger, the Bantry bowler, who's the best in the business. And he's talking about how he wants world domination. And we also have a two page preview of the West Cork Sports Star Awards, which will be held online this Sunday night, March 21st at 7.30 p.m. It's the first time we've we've put the, the, the sports awards online. So you can all... Click in, listen in, watch in on Sunday night to see who will be crowned the 2020 West Cork Sports Star of the Year. And also, there are four more awards being presented on the night. The Hall of Fame Award, the Special Achievement Award, which is going to Corsi Rovers Senior Camogie Team. Um, Nicola Tuttle is the, the young athlete um, from Kilbritton and Bendit Athletic Club who's been crowned the Junior Sports Star of the Year. And on Thursday, Southern Star, we, we will reveal who the West Cork team of the year for 2020 is. So as you can see, it's an action-packed sports section this week. So just want to finish up by saying, don't forget, if you can't make it to the shops, you can always purchase a copy of the Southern Star Digital Edition online. Just head over to southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper and subscribe for less than two euro per week. Thanks again for listening to this week's Star Sport Podcast. We'll be back at the same time next week with Jack McCarran back in tow. You'll be glad to hear. So if you enjoy these shows, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, YouTube even, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Slong the phone, as Jack says.